Hey folks, this is AppShocker. This is the second video on how to program iOS apps with Swift. Um, I would like to tell you what we're gonna do today. We're gonna use three UI elements, which are first, our text field, second, a button, and third, a label. And in the end, we're gonna have to hook up all three UI elements so that they work together in order to produce this mechanism. Okay, let's just start off by doing the UI elements. Okay, first, what you have to know is we're going to go to the main storyboard because this is the place where all the music uh, uh, plays and where we actually have where we actually have the possibility to modify our UI. So, first of all, so you see here, this is the default view controller, the first view controller is seen here to be exact. And in our case here, this scene here or the view controller is pretty large. So um, as we want to make it appear slimmer so that it fits best um, on an iPhone, um, our new Xcode here has a new functionality down here. So you see that if you click down here on with any, a new window pops up and there you can also scale the width and the height of a view controller. This is a really cool feature in my opinion. So for instance, if you want to make it slimmer, then you just have to choose these three, these uh, two rectangulars, like in this case, you click on them and boom, now you got a slimmer one. And this one here looks more like an iPhone. So we're going to use this here. Okay, and if you want to uh, find out more combination possibilities, just check it out down here. I just leave it to you. Now, as I told you previously, we need our UI elements. So now we go. Now we're going to here to this place here, and we're gonna um, enter a text field because we need a text field. So just drag and drop it onto your storyboard. Hang on, this takes sometimes a little. Okay, now scroll it that way enlarge it a little and now we're going to use our button the same holds true for this one here just drag and drop it make it a little bigger now it fits perfect and the last element we need here is a label so we also look for a label here we got a label and we put it here just make it a little bigger as well okay now, what I'm going to do now is we're, I'm going to change the, the, the string of the state, which in this case is our, our default label string. So it just says label. Now I want to change it to my, my first app with Swift because I want, want to highlight it to you that um, I want to show you pretty clearly how we're going to change this string here in this label by clicking on the button. Okay, just hit the enter key and now boom, we're done. So now um, in order to make sure that everything worked well, we can also compile this app here by clicking here on the run icon and you see now it's compiled and boom. Here, can, here you can see our iOS simulator, it pops up. Now it also takes a little while uh, as you might know because the iOS simulator, the very first app when you launch it, needs to get set up and so on and so forth. Um, if you want to know how to make your uh, Yari simulator a little bigger, then you have to hit the command key and you can also switch through the different size via clicking on command 1, 2, 3. Now in my case it's number 3 because it's a little smaller and, and so you can see everything better um, regarding what I'm going to do here. So. As you can see, this is our app now. So this is what we created so far. And for instance, if we click on the button here, uh, nothing happens. And if we click on the text, we can enter some text here. And we can also click on return, but nothing happens. So obviously this is the case because we just drag and drop the UI elements, but we didn't include any logic. So. Now, as you can see, um, this is what we have to do. And furthermore, what we also have to include is that if you click here on the text, then it pops up this, this uh, keyboard here, this virtual keyboard. So 
What we also have to take care of is that this keyboard disappears because if you don't take care of that, then your user will be uh, annoyed by that because nobody likes to have an open keyboard all the time in your app, obviously. So you need to uh, make sure that this doesn't happen. Now let's go back. Let's just um, click on uh, stop and we're going back to the code. So now we got our three UI elements. Now let's go to our view controller. If you're not familiar with the view controller, then please look up the documentation on Apple's uh, UI view controller. It's very um, comprehensive, very sophisticated, uh, and you will learn a lot more about that. In, in a separate tutorial, I'm gonna talk about UI view controller, um, about the UI view controller's functionalities and how you use it, when you use it, uh, what are the pitfalls and so on and so forth. Just remember that this uh, class is very important. You're going to see it on, the, on a regular basis. It's one of the basic elements of iOS development. Hence, it's very important. Now, in our case, uh, we will place here our logic because this is actually the place where we have to pl plant it here because as you can see, we have a storyboard and here we have a view controller scene and this is hooked up with this view controller Swift class here. So we got, got to uh, take care of this class in order to make sure that the, UI, the three UI elements work together well. Okay guys, so you see that here, if you click on the main storyboard and you click on this icon here, which is called show the assistant editor and let's make this a little bigger so you see that you have a split screen you have here on, on the left hand you have what you see on this, your storyboard so your eye and on the right hand you see your code so this is pretty handy here because I'm going to show you how to actually create um, the variables for the UI elements now we're going to hook up the UI elements with the code Click on the text field here, click on control, hold it, use the left mouse button, click on it, hold it, and drag it down here. So you see that this little blue line appears, and now you move it over here, right where the UI view controller class starts. And now leave the left mouse button. And another window pops up and you can also leave the control key and now what you're actually doing is you create your value variables for those UI elements so in this case we're just gonna call it very simply the text field and click on connect boom so you see just so you can see it better this is what you created so if you don't know what this year means, it's very important. So uh, very briefly, this is a directory and it says it's, it's a directory for being an IB outlet. IB stands for interface builder. The interface builder is all that thing here you see that creates, that builds your interface and what you created was an outlet. So this, these animals here, uh, these elements here are outlets. So as a result, this here indicates to iOS that, hey iOS, here you create a text field which was created with the interface builder. Hence, this is an IB outlet. And so please, if you check for the UI elements, go to the storyboard because this is the place where we create our UI elements. So, and it's called the text field and its, of, uh, and its type is a UI text field. So if you read the syntax that way, this is what it want, wants to say. Good. Now we're going to do the same thing for our uh, label here. And again, click on control and your left mouse key, hold both keys. And now you're going to insert it here. Let's call it the label because it's our label here. And now we have created uh, two variables for those two, lab uh, for those two uh, UI elements. What we have to do now is we also have to hook up the code with the button. The button here is a very specific one. First, the button itself is unique in the sense that it also has different possibilities in order to trigger functions or methods. So 
In this case, if you click on it, we can do the same thing as in, in the case of the two other uh, UI elements. We click on control and we, we also insert this element here. Now, a very important difference here is we're not going to create an outlet, we're going to create an action. So, and this is also very important to understand what is the difference. So, if you create here an outlet, so you may just create your variables, so your reference to this UI element, whereas if you create an action, then you create a method that is triggered when you click on this UI element, which in this case is our button. So, as we want our button to do something, we need to create an IV action. And we're going to mm, uh, name it um, the button method. Okay? And we also accept any type that will come up and the event is uh, is a touch up inside event. So back in the good old days, you, you would have, uh, you had to select the type of event. Now it's default touch up inside because it's the most commonly used one uh, in iOS development. Now just click on connect, boom, now you've done. Okay, now I'm gonna put this code here a little that way in order to make sure that you understand it well, how everything works. So you see, now we created our variables for our text field, for our label, and we also have here our method for, for our button. So just bear in mind, this is the IP action we're going to use in order to trigger the functionality we want if we click on this button. Okay, good. Now, let's uh, just do one more thing. Now, here comes the, the most important part. Now we have to take care of what will actually happen if somebody clicks on the button. Okay, so the music plays here. And now here we have to write our code so that the text coming from this UI text field will appear down here in the label. So we actually de facto um, override the current label, like my first app with Swift, this label here the text of this label here, uh, with the text coming in from, from there. How do we do that? Simply because as we already have our, uh, our uh, variables, we can say that the label, okay, oh, also a very important thing you just learned here. Please make sure that we put this variable, I, I just cut it and paste it here. Also very important here is that the the label this variable here references to this here obviously so this here has to appear here, up here and this label this class UI label also has different properties and if you are familiar with Objective C then this this is pretty uh, natural to you right now you just click on a dot and then you have something uh, which is called text. So this is the property of this UI label. So now we want to make this label text here uh, to be set with the one coming from text. So we need the text field text and boom. And we're done actually. So it's, it, that was pretty easy. So you see uh, that we just have to declare that the, the label text here equals this here that comes comes in from there and this all happens by clicking on our button method so let's just try it out and just click on run and let's just see what happens okay let's just introduce this is some sample text click on button and boom so you see it worked we see this text here coming in from here that this text will appear here. So we did our job. So first you can also introduce more text and you'll see, boom, it appears here. Now, we forgot one important thing here though. So as I told you previously at the beginning of this video, um, we have to make sure that this keyboard here does not uh, closes itself when we click the, the, the button here because obviously the user doesn't want it to be there anymore when he clicks on the button. 
So let's just close the simulator and let's just make sure that we do the right thing. Or in other words, we have to know that what actually triggered uh, the appearance of this visual keyboard and that was the text itself. Let's just go to the text field and let's check out what, are, what other properties does it have. So if you're familiar with Objective-C, you already know it, but um, there is something which is called Resign First Responder. So if you use this property here, then our UI, our um, virtual keyboard will disappear. So let's just uh, run the app again. So you see that if we introduce some random text here, click on button, boom, the keyboard disappears. Okay, folks, and that's it for today. You learned how to program a very basic but cool app for beginners. So you learned how to use three very important UI elements. You learned how to use a text field, a button, and a label. Furthermore, you learned how to um, manipulate the string of a label via clicking on a button and de facto overriding a previous text or string in a label. And lastly, what you also learned is how to close the virtual keyboard if you click on a button. So, folks, if you like this video, please thumbs up on that. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like me on Facebook. Don't forget to, to subscribe on Twitter. And please visit our webpage on www.appshocker.com. And if you want to see more videos, please write it down in your comments and also leave some comment about what other functionalities or what other types of apps you would like to see. Please write down below in the comment section. All right, shockers, and don't forget to shock the world with your skills. Stay tuned. All right, shockers, and don't forget to shock the world with your skills. Stay tuned.